Welcome, Sojourners. You have found yourself a cozy place at Sojourners Awake. I'm Jonathan, and this is our production of The Bookish and the Brave, The Adventures of Triina the Dryad. Like you, the Sojourner is on a mission. She faces conflict and sometimes even danger. The light at the end of the tunnel might seem far away, but nevertheless, she presses on with intrigue, mystery, and threat. Nothing good comes from the world while darkness reigns, and in this production we discover the whereabouts and the happenings of the Dryad, and quite possibly the future of her fate and freedom. And so for now, our story continues. Below the night sky, the forest finally stilled in silence. And then, in harmony, the wildlife began to creep back into songs and poetry throughout the wilderness. When the fairy wolves erupted from the mushroom ring, it always caused a brief pause on business as usual. And Triana stood quietly within her tree, watching, waiting, as she always has been. A young black crow flutters from the shadows of the bows above and slowly reformed into a man. Holith now stood there in the grove, taking on his brown and green robe covering his skin, now holding a staff and whistling out, calling for Trina. Trina! Knock, knock! Are you there? You know that I'm here. I am always here. Let's put my head out the tree. I don't know, like, were you sleeping or something? I didn't want to disturb you if you were busy or... Oh, after that ruckus, nothing is disturbing. Where were you for all that? Doing my part. I was staying out of the way. Oh, yeah, I think they noticed. Might not want to show your face to them again. Oh, I have no problem doing that. There was, there's no way I'm ever going to see those uh, bookends ever again. They'll be placed on some god-awful errand, and we'll hear about them in the papers, I'm sure. Um, do you happen to have um, the collection of... I noticed you didn't save me any mushrooms from the ring. Did you happen to save any? Oh, 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 um, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot, you know, everything just happened so quickly, and you'll have to come back next time, I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay, um, just something I'm working on. I, uh, I mean, if the yeah. next time travelers come through, just, if you can, I mean, I don't want it to be too big of a deal, but save some of those mushrooms for me, oh, and no, I'll, no. I'll make it, I'll make it worth your no, while. No, no, no. Oh, of course. I would definitely. I'm so sorry. It's just, you know, normally the travelers get eaten and this time they didn't. And I was just, oh, I forgot to grab anything. And now I'm really sorry. <sighs> hey, it's okay. Not my loss. Um, Halal got what he wanted and um, I will probably head back in devotion. What about you? What have you been up to? You know, just, you know, just things. Oh, I'm, oh, my messengers might be very upset, but no, it's fine. They got away. We'll get more travelers. It'll be fine. Everything's fine. And as you are speaking, Holith, still with his finger raised in a question, does not respond. His body appears frozen, paralyzed, and stiff. Holith? Holith! I'm going to, like, poke him in the forehead. And the cheek, and the other cheek. His body stiff as the redwood tree, not moving at all. And as you poke and prod around, you see that he indeed did step on one mushroom that had gone unlooked. And this mushroom now black, gripping around his foot, piercing into his, but, but beyond his boot. It now splattered and curling around his boot. Indeed, even crawling up and piercing through the leather skin. 
And out from the shadows steps a graceful feminine presence, tall, dark and imposing, and carrying with her the winter winds. A chill blows down your back. The leaves caught up in a whirlwind now grace around her with her long, dark black horns and her piercing pupilless white eyes. She opens up her mouth and speaks. Trina, why are you consorting with that poor mortal man? My queen, I drop to my knees and bow my head. I, I, Come. I don't know what you mean. What, what mortal man? I'm not, I'm not consorting with mortal men. <laughs> Come, darling, impressed by your bowing in your reverence she opens up her arms in a cold winter embrace pulling you ever so close gently patting your hair haven't i told you before not to talk to these mortal travelers that it can be so fickle she then looks at Holif and says ah a druid of the old faith. Even more sickening. He does my not queen, know real power. He's this one has been helpful to my task to you. She begins to raise up the back of her hand to slap you for your impudence. And at you mentioning accomplishing the mission, she restrains and then smiles, revealing sharp white frosted icicles on her lips. How so? He leads the travelers here and makes sure that this is where they camp each night. As you know, I am bound to my redwood tree and and can't go bring them myself. And, And he tells me their business and what they're doing and where they're going. And I have uh, information to share. Don't keep me in suspense, my dear. Uh, there, um, 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 and it's very clear that she doesn't have information and she's making this up, but, uh, uh, there's the three travelers that came tonight. Uh, They're very powerful mortals. They, they defeated your wolves and no one can do that. Never in my life has that happened, but they were so strong and powerful and maybe, you know, you could keep an eye on them and they could serve you somehow. They escape their bookends at that, oh, that awful place where all the dead trees live. <sighs> Horrible. You may make a deception check. Oh no. Is that, that's a charisma check? Yeah, just charisma. Okay. That is a natural 20. <laughs> how, how, how fitting. Okay. The queen then begins to assume a gentler form. The icicles <sighs> melt from her lips and her breath gets frosty and cool. And the wind billows around her cloak and she gently draws you in and begins walking through the forest. Trina, her mm-hmm. long nails begin to gently scrape across your cheeks. Mm-hmm. I knew you would do me well. I am so glad you told me the truth because I am very hungry tonight and my poor wolves have nothing to bring me. I'm so sorry that we failed you, but of course I would always tell you the truth. That little indiscretion in the past is nothing to me. I only serve you. She winces a little bit, you mentioning their sordid past. Yes, of course. Maybe taken aback a little bit by your boldness and bravery at matching up to a very painful memory. She thinks for a minute, and you can 
recollect that she is not usually this silent as you take your walks through the forest. As you're walking along through this very natural forest in the wake of her winter winds, what do you notice? Hmm. I don't want anything to do with her, and I want her to leave me alone. So I am looking up at the stars. I am looking to see if there's any birds in the boughs or critters around, anything that reminds me of summer and warm, happy things while this cold woman puts her arm around me that I despise with all my being. Her icy gaze fixes on the horizon, giving you a moment to break away and find a small squirrel, the break of dawn collecting the nuts. As the sun's rays are gently peeking over the horizon, you know that by now the sojourners have probably arrived to Bald Top if everything had progressed as usual. Mm -hmm. And the little squirrel whom you've named Chigger stares back at you with two large acorns stuffed in his mouth and he's just giving you the thumbs up. You can do this, you can do this. Hang strong, Trina, be strong. And I'm just like, oh, thank you. And just patting him on the head and, and fluffing his tail and just like, oh, sweet little creature building my forest for me, trying to look like I'm nurturing him and caring for him um, and not ignoring the queen. She turns to face you and you turn back and Chigger is gone in an instant, <laughs> leaving you to dance with a couple leaves and acorns. Trina! Of course, my queen. What are you fiddling with? Oh, uh, just one of the neighbors. You know, it's it's just so lonely here. If these sojourners are as powerful as you think they are, well then, we'll just have to keep an eye on them, won't you? Perhaps, given your success, in your discretion at not allowing them to be consumed by the wolves and wasting such a valuable resource, Perhaps, ah, yes. And she begins to smile at her, her intellect and her magnificent wisdom. Perhaps we could give you a different form. And for a brief time, you could go visit the place where all of the dead trees are collected into knowledge and wisdom truth and gobbledygook and all sorts of things like that. Oh. So when she mentioned a new form, I got visibly delighted and excited. And when he said I'm going to Bald Top, I'm just like, oh. Okay. Of, of, of course, my queen. I'm very faithful and, and would be happy to do your bidding. You can count on me. I am always here to serve you. Well, and then she leans forward to you so that your chin is matching hers and she sniffs your lips, your breath and says, do you even have a choice? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I serve you as a joy, whether I have a choice or not. It is my heart's desire. Very well, I will come up with a new form for you, my dear and you will go on a little reconnaissance mission, gather some more information, and mind you, you will be on a tight leash. Of, of course. Uh, my queen, if I could ask just um, one little favor. I know the mortals that they are beneath you, but would you give the druid back to watch over the forest while I'm away? <laughs> He will have plenty of time to recover once that mushroom goes through his system, and he will learn a valuable lesson not to tamper with fungi of dream world, of the land of fairies. I'd learn that lesson. In no time at all. Snow begins to fall in the middle of this warm night, this warm dawn gently caking around your feet and she begins to disappear stepping into a small snowdrift. I will call on you soon Trina her voice echoing deeper and deeper into this icy cavern and then she is gone
I'm going to wait for a minute or two to make sure that she doesn't come back. And as the the morning dawns and the breeze comes through the leaves, I'm going to uh, cut my hands together. And in my hands, there is a small um, infant that fits in between it, uh, still forming, still a little translucent. The veins can be seen just under the skin, but it is a humanoid baby. And I'm just going to look down and be like, oh, I knew you would bring me good fortune. Did you hear that? We're going to be so free soon. You might even get to meet your father. Hollith now groaning in pain and agony lying on the forest floor, the mushroom completely driving through his system as the queen of air and darkness suggested it might take a couple days for the poisons to run through his body. Your redwood tree stands faithful. Chigger close by collecting acorns for his family. A new sun rises upon this morning How does Trina go about her day? As I put my hands to my breast, the form of the infant goes away. Uh, I would like to walk back to where um, Halith is passed out, and I would like to cast Goodberry and um, kind of feed them to see if it helps to wake him up. If it does it, whatever happens, uh, I would then step back into my tree to rest after a long and harrowing night. I'll let you make a medicine wisdom check. That is 17 plus 2. Okay. So as you're feeding these good berries to poor Halef, uh, the veins on his skin are just blue and his face white, his jaw locked and his body rigid. His pupils then turn towards you in agonizing pain. And then he just manages out a small wink and his lips mutter, Help me. The good berry dribbles down his throat, oh. the, the juice dribbling down the sides of his lips. You'll be all right. It's going to pass soon. You'll be fine. I'm out, no, I'm out of good berry, so I'm just like, it's just, you know, maybe look before you step on mushrooms. As you walk away, Chigger runs by, stuffs the remaining good berries in his mouth, and suddenly his belly gets enormously large and bloated and... <laughs> begins to hiccup a little drunkenly staggering home back to his family in the woods. You step through the tree, disappearing for the remainder of the day. No sounds of travelers. It has been a while. With the memory of the sojourners in your mind, as well as your queen, and poor Holleth lying on the forest floor. So for now, our story concludes. Every story comes to an ending, and for now we conclude. Thank you for listening, Sojourners. Your attention will not go unrewarded. And we look forward to continuing this adventure. If you enjoyed this background music and ambiance, you should check out Tabletop Audio. You can find them at www.tabletopaudio.com. Take the time to sojourn with us. For articles on playing Dungeons & Dragons and inspiration on storytelling techniques, visit Sojourners Awake at www.sojournersawake.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. And as always, Sojourner, may your story continue.